We learned so much with Melanie Wong, master clarinet technician. In our last video, she's come back to help us identify what types of things we should consider when purchasing a, a clarinet. If you're looking to purchase a new clarinet, whether that be a used professional clarinet or intermediate model new clarinet, what things to think about? What are the factors to consider? When's the right time to make these moves? And uh, how to get the best results? Hey, look who's back, it's Melanie Wong. Yeah, hey, right. how's it going? Good, so we, we covered some stuff in our last video that was really, really helpful. And I have some more questions for you, as always. I'm never short on questions. I'm curious to know, if somebody's looking to buy a new clarinet, let's say that, that either they're coming back after a long period of time, they're, they're an adult, or even maybe somebody who's in high school, uh, who's looking, they're serious about the clarinet, uh, they've got enough parental support and enough disposable income to buy a new clarinet, and they're, they're coming from a, a student clarinet, or like the ones that, like, you know, that you get when you play in middle school, and they're gonna get a new clarinet. One of the questions I see posed quite frequently is, should I get a used professional clarinet or should I buy a new intermediate clarinet? Believing that those are about the same price point, approximately, obviously with a, with a used clarinet, you never know exactly what the cost is gonna be, but you also don't know how, how much it's been played, how well it's been taken care of. And so there's the sort of the intermediate market. What should somebody think about when it comes to like considering buying a used R13 or whatever, I, I talk about buffets because that's what I play. I don't mean to, I don't mean to dismiss any other instrument. Yes. But let's, let's say an, an old clarinet that that's that that is top of the line, versus a new clarinet that's in an inter, an intermediate model. Let's say like like an E11 or a E12F or a I can't remember all the names yeah. of things or whatever mm -hmm. whatever whatever Yamaha produces as their intermediate line or even like Bakun mm -hmm. or, or you know any any of the any of the major manufacturers that that produce like legit instruments. Uh, what should somebody think about when it comes to that? A lot of that has to do with, um, at least in my opinion, um, how serious you are about about this. When you're gonna, if you're gonna get an intermediate instrument, you are typically sacrificing. You know, the the key quality is not as good. It's not as strong, um, and it's and the the tone is not as not as good. Um, it's usually a lot more simple. It's not as colorful. It's not as flexible. Um, the pitch is usually not as good. Um, and so if you're serious about, about going forward and you're, and you're really wanting to play, usually it's going to be better to get a used professional one, ideally one that is not too used and not, you know, and has been well taken, well maintained. Um, when you, you know, if you do, if you come across an instrument that is well-maintained and maybe even it's possible that even it's 20 years old, um, usually you're still going to have better intonation. The key work will have been better from the start. So even though it's old, it's, it's going to be a lot more, you know, robust than the key work on anything intermediate. Um, and yeah, as long as the tuning is still good, that's usually just going to be the superior the superior choice. And hopefully if it's been well-maintained, if it's been, um, you know, taken care of by especially like a top repair technician in the country, then, you know, you might even have saved yourself some money on like overhauling the thing, which, which is also can be great. Well, I mean, you know what I'm playing. I'm, I'm telling everybody else the the, the, R, the RC prestige that I have uh, was used, uh, bought by somebody who buys too many clarinets. He had it overhauled by, overhauled by Kristen Bertrand. Mm -hmm. Great overhaul, great instrument, and I played it. I've been playing it for a longer than I, than I than I can even actually remember. It's near the end of its life, but it served me incredibly well. And it was I I it was not new. I, you know, and the, I'm trying mm -hmm. to think. I, the A clarinet I have, I bought new. The E flat I bought new, and I've only had one new B flat clarinet ever in my life. Everything that I've bought. Mm -hmm was uh, owned by somebody else first. And, but it was always owned, I mean, that's one of the fortunate things about being in New York and playing professionally is, you know, you'll, you'll, find, you'll find people that have great clients they wanna sell because they're addicted to buying stuff and they gotta get rid of something before they buy something mm -hmm. else. If you're a, an opportunist like I am, yes, <laughs> you take advantage of those situations. Uh, 
But not, yes. not, not everybody has that, that situation, right? And, and I think that that's, that's one of the things where I feel concerned sometimes for people if they're buying, like the instruments that we talked about in our old video, an instrument that's been sitting for a long time, that it's mm -hmm. unclear as to actually what it is. And then somebody buys yes. it, you know, not necessarily know it was a professional clarinet, and it certainly is, but it, that might require an entire overhaul, which mm -hmm. if, you, if that gets done right, that's a fair amount of money, right? I mean, I haven't had a clarinet mm -hmm. overhaul in a long yeah. time. How much is that? And if, well, I, I don't want to speak for anybody else, but yes, it is a hefty amount, a hefty amount of money. And it's often, if the clarinet is older, it's often more expensive um, than if it was a newer clarinet. I, I mean, can, can, so. that, that's just ballpark it. I mean, since, since, since you're retired, you don't have to say what your price used to be. Because quite honestly, Melanie never really yeah. charged enough money. I'll <laughs> but, but I'll just say that. But, but even but, still, it's like it's it's well over a thousand dollars. So right. So so yeah. So, so for a true overhaul, right. like right, which is really taking care of all of the key work, fixing all of the springs, like really everything. A lot of people will call just like a repad um, an overhaul, and that's like where they really don't do so many of the things that really need to be done, they just change out the pads and that can be a lot cheaper. So yeah, don't get fooled by that either. <laughs> Make sure you know what you're getting well, when you hear overhaul. Right, I, I, I think that that's something for all of us to pay attention to, right? Is, is mm -hmm. the terminology isn't as standardized as one might think that it is. Mm -hmm. And perhaps it should be. Not at all. That's something that is is a, is a real a real thing. A freshly overhauled instrument is pretty spectacular. I, I know people that buy new instruments and have them overhauled immediately, which seems, Crazy. Mm -hmm. It seems crazy to me. That is crazy that that we have to do that, isn't it? Yeah, well, yeah it is. Yeah. It, yeah, I mean, like, yeah, I don't, I don't want to say anything bad about anybody or anything, <laughs> but but th 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 there's that's a weird standard in the, in our in our little corner of the world. You know, let's let's say I'm 16 and talented, and my mom wants to buy me a new clarinet, and I end up, you know, deciding I I don't want a clarinet that anyone else has played. I, I want I want a new one, but the price point needs to be not five thousand dollars for for my B flat clarinet or whatever. Well, I, I'm I'm guessing what a, what a buffet costs these days. Again, I'm picking on buffet mm -hmm. or picking out buffet because that's that's what's in my house. Yeah. They're also, you know, the they they do have nearly a monopoly on on the industry. Even as we see so many professionals, you know, maybe changing to other to other brands, like really like buffet far 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 at this point in time <laughs> um, outsells everybody else everybody else so it, it's fair to say like to use buffet that way i only know the buffet model numbers i don't know the model numbers of other other companies or what their their instruments are called mm -hmm. i know i think summer's putting out a very good intermediate instrument right now i've never actually seen one i don't the intermediate instrument segment is interesting to me because i i i, I don't see them i mean you'll see them on a professional job but i also don't see kids playing them and i don't really understand where they fit in into the spectrum mm -hmm. of why somebody would buy one. I know like a lot of bands in Texas where they're gung ho, everybody starts on an intermediate mm -hmm. instrument and not, and not a student instrument. Is that, is that pretty accurate? But in Texas, even a lot of people, they, they almost, they very, they move up very quickly from intermediate to professional even. Yeah. Intermediate, I would say was very, very popular um, a few decades ago when the price point was significantly cheaper. Um, and a lot of the time you could get, especially for younger students, you could get something that was really kind of everything that they needed, um, especially especially at that time, the E11s, you know, in E12Fs were like the standard there. And there wasn't really a, a competitive, another competitive intermediate model like around. Um, it, these are all my opinions, <laughs> but yeah. And it really could kind of do everything you needed and the key work was was good you know it was not as good as a professional instrument but it was it was good um or at least so, like very solid those were those were okay um at the time but they they're just very they're often very limiting is really the well, thing well and so i just want to make sure you know i mean uh you've been invited here to offer an opinion so people can stop hearing my opinion on things <laughs> so, so it, it's it's a breath of fresh air for yes. anyone that watches this channel very frequently what i'm hearing and and maybe you wouldn't say it this way but maybe you can tell me if you think this is a fair interpretation of it if somebody has the money to start on an e11 that's cool but moving from a student instrument 
to an E11, to an R13 would actually just be more expensive in the long run if somebody was going to end up at an R13. That stopping point in the middle is not super useful. It's not super useful. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not super useful. Okay. Um, it, it, yeah, like again, like you said, it depends on the finances. If you just absolutely don't have the the finances to buy a new or even like a, a new ish buffet, uh, or sorry, any any <laughs> professional model. Sure, right. um, yeah, like there's there's times where it would make sense, but for the most part, like if you can afford you know, a newer instrument or like a really, and if you have access to a really solid used one. And at this point, really like, you know, there's so many um, boutique clarinet dealers out there that have amazing inventory of used instruments that often their repair shops have uh, gone over and either overhauled or like made sure that they're in really great condition. Like, you know, that's usually going to be the better option if you can make it happen at all. Right. Because you and I both both say buffet all the time. Let's just make it like like really clear. I've always played buffet. Well, that's not true. I played LeBlanc for a little while. But I, I, I played, I've played buffet the majority of my life. And Melanie and I cultivated our friendship and our relationship at the buffet showroom in New York City. That's central to, to, the, to the thing. It's absolutely important to say buffet is not the only way to play the clarinet. And and I think you no. and I both both sort of just drop that. Especially not now. No, yeah, not now. There are there yes. are more clarinets now that are yes. very good than ever before. Yes. I actually had thought about talking about this, but like I tell me if this is a crazy thing to say. I've got an I've got a position that we actually are living in the kind of the golden age of probably all instruments, but I really only know a lot about clarinets. There's more good clarinets being made right now than ever before. That's probably true. I mean, I, I, that's probably true. I mean, that's probably true because now we have Royal like, and yeah, Selmer has done some really incredible things with their professional line. And yeah, there's, there's a lot more, there's a lot, a lot going on. Cause there's a lot of models too before, like you typically had like one or two models, you know what I mean? And now there's so many options, um, even if it's not that many manufacturers i went to the i don't know if you know this you probably do i went to the clarinet convention over the summer my first mm-hmm. the, my first time but you know it was in colorado so it was kind of everybody's reads were messed up so i, I didn't feel super great playing even my own instrument but the, the new yamahas blew me away i played the royal globals they were great yes you know i, Yamaha, I played a, a, yes. a couple a couple yeah. of they were fantastic and i was thinking to myself those ubel clarinets those ubel clarinets like yes some sort yeah. of freakish thing. no those are great I mean, they're, yeah. they're, 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 they're great they're, yes. they're like I did, and so well made, yeah. I didn't walk up to any table there and pick up a pick up a clarinet and think, you know, none of them. There, 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 there was mm-hmm. a lot, a lot of good clarinets that were being that, yes. that were that were being made. It's exciting yeah. because things have just really, really opened up. I mean, like when I'm trying to think, like when I was a kid, which was a long time ago. Really, the only thing anybody played was a buffet, and that is just 100 percent not true mm-hmm. anymore. Right. But 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 like you yeah. said, most most of the clarinets I yeah. see are buffets. It's unusual to see a different yeah. one in the wild. You know, like, mm-hmm. you know, I know, like when I see. And when you're talking used, it's really like it often just really ends up being buffet because that was true for so long. Right. Um, and they have just sold so many, so many more clarinets than every other manufacturer out there. So just just those numbers alone mean that they are going to be the bulk of the used market. So here's my question. I'm either between 50 and 70. And I'm coming back to the clarinet and I don't have one. I used to play it, but I don't have one anymore. And I'm going to look for a clarinet, a used clarinet of some variety. Or I'm mm-hmm. a I'm a 16 year old. I've got a 16 year old child and mm-hmm. I want to buy them a used clarinet, like a professional model. You get the clarinet, either it gets mailed to you and you can send it back, right? Whatever the situation is. What should I look yeah. for? Is there anything visible or notable that I should pay attention to? In, in examining this clarinet, because I think that a lot of people don't know what they're, I mean, they know it's a clarinet, I'm not, you know, but, but like, what are, they, what are they looking at? And, and, and how should they discern, uh, just from a visual test, is there any red flags in, in buying this particular one? First of all, if you have a teacher or anyone knowledgeable in your life that you can ask, take it to them, <laughs> because they will be able to, even the visual things I'm going to talk about, they'll just be able to see it probably more clearly. But yeah, I mean... It, like you want to look at the condition it's in right so are the keys like like are they like covered in i mean sometimes you see see keys that are covered in almost like a plaque 
material, you know, they're like crusty with stuff all over it. That doesn't mean the instrument's horrible, but it means it's going to cost a pretty penny to, to fix it up. Um, if there's any visible cracks, you know, in the wood, like you don't want, and sometimes it's very difficult to tell grain from cracks. And so if you're an amateur player, you know, again, if you can take it to anybody that knows about cracks, like that would be, that would be wonderful. Um, but you really don't want to buy something that's been cracked, especially if it hasn't been repaired properly. Like that's a little bit more of a wild card. And then you can look up the serial number. Um, and so, yeah, especially, especially if you are looking at buffets, like the serial numbers, you can look them up online and you can see what year the, the instrument is. So you can start to get a feel for like how old it is. You know, if it's 15, 20 years old, like that's usually not too bad. That's actually like fairly new. If you've got something that's a hundred years old that you probably don't want to waste your time on. When I used to deal a lot with um, people buying older clarinets, definitely, I would used to say definitely not anything before like the 90 thousands, uh, because nine, like in the 90 thousands of buffet, it was like a, go ahead, go well, ahead. No, can, can you translate 90 thousand to what year that was? So it, we can talk about other clarinets in that same conversation. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, to be honest, I don't remember the exact years, but it's like in the, in the late 90 thousands, um, to like early hundred thousands, that's that was like a, a bit of a golden era of buffets. Um, was that the, the key work was that the seventies, eighties, the sixties, just ballpark. Yeah, I want to say it's in the seventies or late sixties. But oof, there was a time where I knew that like right off the back of my hand, but <laughs> I don't remember it now. But well, well, hopefully somebody yeah. will just tell us in the comments. Say like, that YouTube is good for that. Yes. Yeah. You can look it up. It's like, but yeah, in the yeah. 90,000s. Um, I, like, I could look it up, but I mean. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Someone will tell us in the comments. Someone yeah. will say if I, <laughs> how off I was and how quickly I've forgotten. <laughs> oh man. But yeah, it's like those, that those could be some, some really great clarinets. They also, of course, because they are that old, though, have a very high probability of having been very, very blown out or having had some crazy work done to them that is no longer fixable because that does happen, but they, they could also be great. So it's, it's worth like taking it to somebody as far as like visually, like what else? I mean, you can kind of look at the, the pads, but the pads are fairly easy to replace. And I can't necessarily say depending on the price, um, you know, like if you would, if it's worth like being like, I'm not going to get this clarinet cause it needs a few new pads, right? Like, well, I mean, because it's pretty common. I know, I know when people are looking at old saxophones, the key work will get a little bit jiggly. Does that happen with clarinets? Mm -hmm. the, 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 Absolutely. Is, is that Absolutely. Is that something to look for? Is that, is that, that's an expensive fix, right? To, to do it right. Yeah, it all goes into the overhaul. Right. But but yes, every clarinet gets jiggly. You'll see brand new clarinets out of the factory <laughs> that, are, that are way more jiggly than you would expect right. they would ever be. And it's hard uh, if you don't have someone trusted to say like for sure not to get it. But I would say it's more of a, how many of these things are you seeing, right? Like if it's kind of all over the place, like the key work is horrible. It looks, looks visually horrible that, you know, you, everything is jiggling wildly. The pads are terrible. The wood looks super dried out. You know, that's a lot. You can really get the idea that this is going to be an expensive repair. Right. Um, but if you have some knowledge that this thing was almost never played, it's just been sitting there and it's from a great year, it might be worth still taking to somebody because, and, you know, and, and the price is really cheap right. because somebody doesn't know what they've got. Like it could still be worth it, but, but it's just going to make your life harder. Right. And so if you don't have a good repair person around you or somebody that you've access to or someone, you know, that you can mail it to and it's going to give, you know, that's. Well, I mean, I th it's all going to make your life harder. I, th I think it's really hitting on, is there somebody in your life, a teacher or yeah. you know, somebody, you know, somebody that knows like, here's what you got to do. And they can kind of yeah. hook you up with the right person to do it. I think that, that, mm -hmm. that that's a big yeah. deal, right? I mean, if it, it does yes. turn into like a, a small world of who's connected to who mm -hmm. in a situation. But, yes. but I, I do want to go back to something that you said that I think is really important because there's been a couple times where I've had a cracked clarinet and didn't know because I, even as somebody who spends their whole life with a clarinet in my hand, I can't see a crack as as well as I should be able to because it looks like grain mm -hmm. a lot of the time. It absolutely looks like grain. Yes. And I remember some of my trill, yeah. I had a crack in my trill key and, I, and, and like things were just going haywire. And I was like, I hand it to you and you're like, oh yeah, your clarinet's cracked. 
I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and I, this is a quick story. My favorite thing that any uh, repair technician has ever said to me, well, many of them were said by you, but this one particularly was said by you. And it was right before you left town. Uh, I, I can't you my E flat clarinet. And it's a two piece E flat clarinet. And yeah, yeah, yeah. you looked at it and you're like, yeah, there's a crack in the tone hole in, in, in the tenon. Um, but I don't have any time to fix it. And he handed it back to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, all right. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, 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 yeah, that's sort of the situations yeah. right where I can see that happening. Yeah, you know, like, like, like when you left town, I was a little bit paralyzed with fear about what I was going to do, and then you just like it was like you poured gas on that fire. Like you've got a major problem, <laughs> and I'm handing it right back to you because I'm leaving tomorrow. <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! I do think locating cracks is. A very, it's a super challenging thing to do. You know, it's while really we're on tough. this, really while, while we're on this topic, what I was told to do was if you can find, if you know your client is cracked, mm -hmm. mark it with a pencil so that your technician mm -hmm. can see if it's gotten bigger. Is, yes. is, is that helpful to you all? Yes. <laughs> okay. Oh, yes. I, not everyone requires it. I definitely used to tell people, any of my clients right away, like mark it because yeah, you want to know if it's growing, if it's shrunk, um, because then it's, it's kind of amazing how, you know, you could be playing a clarinet and we did talk about this in the last video that like, you know, the wood is expanding a lot. And so a crack can become quite visible, like while you're playing it and then you don't play it for a couple of hours or, you know, a couple of days and you bring it into your repair team, it's gone. It is like invisible or nearly invisible. And it can be, and then it's a challenge for us to, if it wasn't marked to begin with, you know, for us to have to try to reopen it a little bit and try to see like where we think it was and hope that we, you know, then repaired the entirety of it. If there's anything we can do to make our repair technician's life easier, we should do that. Yes. Right. We yes. shouldn't be trying to make it yes. harder. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Easier yeah. and just more likely that the crack repair is going to hold, you know, right. because right. You're, at least you'll have some confidence that like, yes, I like we got it. <laughs> we got it. all that we've that has, you know, thus been seen. <laughs> well, Melanie, this has been amazing. And it's, it's and it is great to see you. Uh, yes, you do. Uh, well, I mean, th this is slightly personal, but like. I went to visit my mom in Arizona over the holidays. They weren't there. They'd come to visit yes. New York. Oh. <laughs> anyway, know. it's so great to see you. Thank you for doing this. You too. All right. Yeah, anytime. <laughs>